It is my decision alone to determine the fate of whatever I find past the bounds, the bounds of the explored world. Every world I discover along with all there is to find thereon, resources, people, riches, and mysteries, is mine by right. I command millions of lives, rule over numerous planets, and possess fortunes that no planetary governor or commander could dream of amassing. And you, Co., are one of those with the Von Valencius blood in their veins and a rightful claim to this inheritance when the hour comes. I'm ready to take on the sacred purpose. Oh yes, you would be, wouldn't you? The question is, am I ready to choose you over the rest? You came aboard hours before the warp jump and have not yet distinguished yourself in any way. As things currently stand, I have doubts that you are suitable for the role of rogue trader. That's founded. Blood right alone is not enough to earn the high honor of becoming the banner of a warrant of trade. Nonetheless, your abilities and talents may yet prove useful. If not for the role of Lord Commander, then for that of their closest ally. He sighs and looks away pensively for a moment. Alas, even those responsibilities can at times be too challenging for those who share your blood. Kunrad Voitfer served me for many years before he made his mistake. Hmm. I hear it correctly, the Master of Whispers is related to you? His kinship to me is most distant, as is yours. Nonetheless, he does bear the name Von Valencius, even if he avoids using it publicly, and as such, strictly speaking, can be considered my heir. The door, however, is closed to him. Voitvir's performance in his current role is satisfactory, or used to be at least. Interesting. Does this mean there are other heirs? Oh. Um. There we go. I don't... Ah, oh, man. Hey, uh, mods, can we ping... Triwar and Barry to make a camera bar. I feel like I should be like here. Yeah. I, I want people to be able to see the the art is phenomenal. Yep. I'll just pop myself down here for now, but yep. uh, naturally some of it to arrive on board, but you have had the pleasure of meeting one of them. Edelthrad may be somewhat disconcerted by the scale of the responsibilities that may potentially fall upon his shoulders. However, I have a good feeling about him as a candidate. If you're satisfied with Edelthrad, then what sense is there in having this conversation? Why are you wasting your time on me? He's gonna say something about me, giving me the opportunity to prove myself. Impatience. I'm rather fond of impatient people. They're not as quick to resign themselves to circumstances and more eager to show initiative. Even if I do choose Edelthrad as my successor, I will still require, Lord, loyal advisors. Skill and knowledge you acquired in your former life may prove invaluable here in the Coronas Expanse. Your noble descent is a sign that power lives in your very flesh and blood. You would never doubt your words or actions, never show weakness, never let an involuntary gesture or a careless word betray your fears or agitation. At least, if your upbringing was as thorough as mine was in my time. Many will grovel at your feet. Governors, commanders, highborn navigators, conceited lords, and you cannot allow them to sense weakness and the one who stands above them. Wow. A sanctioned noble mutant whose genes allow them to safely guide a warp-capable void ship through the warp. A navigator. Moreover, Theodora inclines her head slightly. Your remarkable mental abilities were noted in your profile. If you can find a way to exhibit them in service of the Von Valencius dynasty, well, so much the better. Thank you for clarifying. May I ask my questions? The box affixed to Theodora's attire suddenly comes to life, but all you can hear is unintelligible noise. Theodora winces, shuts off the transmission, and gives you an imperious nod. Imperious nod. I have some time before the navigator gives the symbol to initiate the void ship translation out of the warp, and my presence is required on the bridge. Okay. Navigator translation, what are these things you speak of? Sometimes I forget that people without direct access to the ship's bridge may not know the first thing about how a void ship travels between the stars. Vessels such as this are capable of leaving real space and traversing into the warp, an otherworldly dimension of cruel and unthinkable forces. You have seen Event Horizon, haven't you? By entering it under the protection of the Geller Field, we shorten the route to our destination, crossing distances that would require hundreds of years in a matter of weeks instead, sometimes in days or even hours. That is how humanity spread across the galaxy. That is how we were able to build the Imperium, which spans millions of stars. An incident took... Dude, that's, that's, that's such a crazy idea. Like... They basically utilize some kind of hell dimension to spread around the, the universe. That's so wild. Like, that, that's freaking awesome, dude. That's, that's very metal. An incident took place in the officer's deck. Some servitors went berserk and attacked the crew. 
Is that so? Perhaps the Technomats were careless during maintenance, or it could be the warp playing tricks on us in spite of the Geller field. Or perhaps there is something to all the stories about the ship being possessed after all. Abelard. The gray-haired officer gives the rogue trader a look of cautious disapproval. Lady Theodora, for the God Emperor's sake, surely do not intend to start repeating idle rumors spread about by the uneducated riffraff. Enough, Abelard. You will not speak of chat that way. Such hearsay amuses me. Adara eagerly retells me everything she learned from the whispers of her unseen advisors. The ship is thousands of years old. It has enough hidden nooks, malfunctions, cogitators, and unused compartments to make ignorant folk speak of specters dwelling inside of the bulkheads and plotting against those who live. Yep. I know, right, Chad? How dare she? Where is your ship headed? The Rykad system, the domain of the rogue trader Winter Scale, one of my peers and rivals. Only three rogue traders exist in the Coronas Expanse, and each of them possesses resources comparable to mine. Perhaps you will one day assist House Van Valencius in surpassing both of them in affluence and splendor. I set the course for Rykad on demand. Theodore grimaces. She gives you a stern look and shrugs. For a very specific reason. Perhaps I shall yet apprise you of the purpose for this voyage, but now is not the time. What are my current responsibilities? Observe, learn, absorb. It will take time for you to find your bearings aboard this vessel and in your new position. Eventually I will find a post that suits you as I did for Edelthrad. Until that time comes, consider yourself my aid. Surely there are ways I can prove myself over the air. You can start by not asking questions of this sort. I have no need for sycophants. I will draw my conclusions when an opportunity to prove yourself arises. As for when you will be granted that opportunity, only the Gob Emperor knows. I have no more questions. In that case, I shall head to the Vox Awakens once more. This time you pick up shouting. The Lord Captain freezes, listening to the Vox cast, then nods and draws her weapon. Disturbances reported in the adjacent deck. Seneschal, if the need arises, protect the new blood. She glances at you. It is possible that the chance to prove your worth may present itself sooner than you may have anticipated. Oh, damn. All right, here we go. You will beg for mercy. But I will grant none. All combatants oh, act in turns, know. and their order is determined by an initiative roll. The order of turns is displayed on the left side of the screen from the bottom to the top. The character at the very bottom goes first, then onto the one above, and so on. Oh my god, there are so many people. Heretics. One fewer target! Bro! Reduced to dust. Okay. <laughs> Use cover to avoid enemy attacks. Cover that a character can hide behind is marked with a shield or a shield with a skull. When standing close to them, the character will automatically take up advantageous... Uh, positions. In this case, the chance an enemy attack will cover. Okay. Character will not receive a bonus if attacked from a side not protected by their current cover. Alright, so let's get back uh, here. Let's go ahead and you serve me to Theodora. You serve Ooh, me now, me. girl! <laughs> and uh, we're gonna fire this guy. I'll make it happen. Another enemy down. Woo! Shot that dude's arm right off. Um, I still don't think I have any voice of command. Yeah, I can't voice of command anyone. Okay. Your character just landed a critical hit that deals increased damage equal to the character's critical damage stat. The character's critical damage is 150 of their normal damage by default. However, certain talents, effects, and abilities can increase it. Each weapon also has its own critical damage stat, which is added to the character's total stat value during attacks. I'm currently using a stub revolver. 15 armor pen, it's a one-hand ranged weapon that's solid ammunition, 7 to 10 damage, an additional hit chance of 15. And what is my critical hit on this? Oh, I have to have... Oh, I guess it doesn't have an extra critical hit to it. Okay. Interesting. Right. Right. All right. Uh, we're done.
Okay. How'd you like this? Oh, oh the attack of opportunity. Worse. Okay. I took care of this one. Destroyed. Oh, that would have been so good. I think that's a Melta. Woo! Your character has received a temporary positive effect from an ally. Such effects enhance your character's capabilities in combat in some way. Learn more about the effect you've gained. Hover the cursor over the effect icon next to the character's portrait. Kill them. 50 ballistic skill until the end of combat. Okay. I'm just gonna chill right back here. Yeah, I'm fine here. Boom. Boom. Perch of heretics, I am working on. Uh, Barry, that's great, dude. If you want to throw that on, that'd be fantastic. Uh, Mort, take a team with you and clear a path to the transport line. Do not let a single horse in survive. The rogue trader turns her eyes to you. Didn't bat an eye when that scum burst out of the deck, huh? Not bad. I've seen many an officer who panicked at the sight of combat in the upper decks. The false sense of security offered by their position makes them that much more vulnerable to the harsh realities of warp travel. The incident with the rampaging servitor may be connected to what is transpiring now. Possibly, quite likely. We will investigate at a later time. Right now we need to isolate the affected compartments and try to assess the situation. What is, what, what, I'm going to ask what is happening, but I have an idea. From what we have seen, Coin can speculate that we are dealing with some variety of madness induced by warp travel. Such episodes are not uncommon among voidsmen who have found themselves outside the boundaries of real space. But such episodes seldom spill onto the depths. Casters are not working or have been sabotaged. Either the warp is toying with us or somebody sent went to great lengths to cut the ship's communications. I will need a direct channel to the engine seer. Prime. Tech priest who specializes in the maintenance and repair of sacred machines. Before I can get a sense of what we are up against. Whatever it may be, keep your weapons at the ready. I imagine it will be some time before we no longer need them. How could there be armed people in the ranks of the crew who would dare to avoid the Lord Captain? Or to uh, attack the Lord Captain? Trust me, Co, this is hardly surprising for a crew of thousands. The lower decks are a fertile environment for discontent and heresy, no matter how one tries to incinerate any seed before it can take root. All it takes is a hint of warp influence to cloud the minds of normally obedient cattle. Ouch. Sporadic riots in the lower decks never reach those compartments. Theodore's anger causes the Seneschal to shrink slightly. No, the tumults of the rabble are always contained within their own territory. This is too well organized. It is spreading too rapidly. What are your orders? Mort has gone on ahead to clear a path for us. If you want to make yourself useful, go after him and see if the arch militant requires aid and be quick about it. Okay. Oh, we got a T-pose. Rise to the top or get seat. left in the dust. Uh, I'm pretty angry. I can't loot anything. Just saying. The massive golden structure never stops moving for a moment. Light bounces off the orbits and figures representing celestial bodies. That's so badass. Oh, I love it. Keep your wits about you. Ooh. You know, water. Not optional. Thanks, Amelia. Did I finish creating a character? It took me about an hour to make my character. Yep. We did go over the majority of the options, though. Let us not dawdle. Always keep your eye on the prize. The lack of loot is disturbing. I think we're kind of in the tutorial still. I always keep my options open. Oh. 
That dude just got blasted stage left. Here we go. Thank Providence you're alive and well. Always on time, eh, Coonrad? The moment we finish chasing the riffraff around the deck, you show up. Always just after the fighting's done. You can set your chrono by it. Mort, pull yourself together. What, did the Lord Captain send you to chivy us along? We're all done here. I'll report right away. Mort pulls his box from his belt and hurriedly early reports the situation. Master of Whispers, what is happening on my ship? The box net is silent and the box masters is not responding. Armed assailants have stormed the officer's deck and my arch militant just destroyed several more heretics on the way here. Is this a severe case of warp madness? Have some of my crew lost their minds, forgotten who they are and who they serve? Report. I have not yet received word from the Engineerium regarding any Gellerfield failures, but communications were already unstable half an hour ago and now they have ceased altogether. Whatever the cause may be, the consequences are spreading fast. I am receiving scatter reports from the middle decks, and the only box casts from the lower bays are one-way heretical gibberish. But the madmen have already reached the officer's decks to suggest that this outage was planned and an outrage was planned in advance. Perhaps this is an organized mutiny. Who would attempt a mutiny here in the war? Lunatics, fools, heretics, the ship houses thousands upon thousands of people. Pernicious thoughts and warp-induced delusions could have tainted any one of them. It's a difficult notion to accept that such risks are inescapable. First, we have to confirm that the bridge and the navigator's sanctum are secure, and I have the means to do both things at once. Edelthrad, where is he? I must know if he is unharmed. A psyker aboard a ship that is potentially being assailed by the warp could pose a greater threat to himself and others than a whole army of madmen with improvised weapons. I wonder if Edelthrad is the person that's doing this. I tried to locate him, but the last thing known about his movements is that he arrived on transitional deck 18. Last it. Master of Whispers, find Edelthrad immediately. Seneschal, locate Talas and the Sister of Battle. Both are to remain at my side. Arch Militant with me. I must go to my study, and it appears we might encounter those heretics along the way. Co. If I may, Lord Captain? This is Coonrad. Transitional Deck 18 is at the heart of the disturbance, and if our goal is to bring Edelthrad back, I can use some support. After all, I am not as adept at directly confronting enemies of the house as the esteemed Arch Militant, and taking into consideration Edelthrad's psycho powers. See ya! Then it's settled. Co, find Edelthrad and bring him here, in whatever state you find him. This elevator, she points at the massive doors, leads to restricted compartments such as my personal chambers and the bridge. Do not let me down. I require you both. You understand? I should do everything in my power. Not everything in your power. You will do as I say. I'll have your heads if you fail. Is that clear? Then move out. Do you need to know stuff about Warhammer to get into this? No, you don't. Nope. There's there any any time something is referenced, a lot of times you can mouse over it and kind of like get a little bit of a a thing there. Um, are you ready to head to 18? It's a long walk, and you do not even have proper gear. I shall make do lead the way. Of course you will. He rummages in his pocket for something. Lady Theodora would never have sent someone she couldn't rely on as one of her heirs. That is no longer relevant. With a pop and a sharp crackle, something hits you in the abdomen, and you are consumed by unbearable, gunt wrenching pain. Bro. I promised you a special Destiny Co. It's time to fulfill it. Chat, we just got co-stabbed. Sigh. What is going on here? Ow, rude. Careful, careful. Be gentle with our guest. He has an important mission to complete during our visit to the Warren Chamber. And for that, I need him breathing. Oh, you are back with us, I see. Delightful. What's the meaning of this? You must have hit your head harder than I thought. 
No matter. Very little is required of you, just your blood, which you can either share of your own volition, or I will spill it for you. Oh, how nice we have options. Great. I love having options. We are in the anteroom of the War in Chamber, this void ship's most hallowed vault. There, beyond those gates, lies the relic that gives Theodora all of her power. The sacred Warrant of Trade. Only one obstacle remains on my path to obtaining it. The gates of the chamber are guarded by the Sentinel, an ancient device that will only open the door to a true heir of the dynasty. I expected to do this part myself, but never mind. You will offer your blood to the Sentinel. What is it, inbred? Is your blood too thin for the Sentinel? On the contrary, the Warp's blessing has raised me too much above your kind, Fawn Valencius. The Sentinel refused to submit to me. But the you Warp's can help. blessing? After all, isn't that what Heresy! We must purge the heretic. We must purge the heretic! Why are you doing this? Why? Because I am following an order. What is happening on this ship right now has been in the making for a very long time. An order? All that remains is to obtain what my master sent me for. The warrant of trade. Uh-oh. I have no intention of helping you. I am afraid that you have no choice in the matter. Try to resist. And I will demonstrate the power that the warp holds over mortals. Come to think of it, I might even take some pleasure in doing so. Dude, what is no, what is what is what is happening? Um, okay. To the void with you. Oh no. One of the available dialogue options requires making a skill test, unlike with passive tests, which are made automatically. In this case, you can decide whether or not to select an option, the consequences of which will depend on the result of the associated test. Success or failure affects how the dialogue will develop. Depending on the context, it might change the course of the conversation, alter the character's attitude, or perform an action whose consequence will only become apparent later. Of your cursor over the dialogue option to see the required skill test, you will see a tooltip detailing your chances of success. The blade flashes in the dim light and drops of blood appear in your palm. For a brief moment you feel nauseous, your head is spinning, and then quiet whispers begin to flood your mind. More and more sourceless voices echo to each other, drowning out your own thoughts, replace them with a singular urge. Go to the gate. Go to the gate. Go to the gate. Now weird, it said I could mouse over them to see the options, but I don't... I guess that, that was weird. Um, the voices in your head giggle and mock your desperate outcry. You feel this intruding influence forcing you onto your feet and making you take a step forward towards the gate looming in the center of the chamber. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if this I kind of have to fail. Maybe? Ah, here we go. In the gateway arch, you see a cogitator with a human likeness built into the front panel. As you approach, the torso twitches slightly. This is a servitor, an obedient automaton created from a lobotomized human being. The sentinel turns its head to you, one of its eye sockets lighting up with two ember-like irises. Examine the device. Carefully inspect the design of the gate cogitator. What immediately catches your eye is a strange alloy that was used as material for the machine's components, some of which are unfamiliar to you. You su suspect this might be some kind of archaeotech relic. An incredibly rare and powerful piece of technology from humanity's ancient past. Gain 20 experience. The servitor on the gate begins to move. With the screeching and groaning of metal, it leans forward close to you. Its lower jaw opens with a drawn-out shriek, much wider than the jaw of a living human could. The servitor's mouth is filled with sharp metallic fangs and a glint in the dim light. The mid-screen to the right of you lights up, showing strings of mysterious symbols on a green background. A whisper runs through your consciousness, insisting, demanding sacrifice. The voices that filled your head after once they are wounded you with this blade did not go away. On the contrary, their source coiled 
itself into a tight knot somewhere in the depths of your mind. Look for anything that can be used as a weapon. You look around in hopes of finding at least something that can work as a weapon. Your search is in vain. The chamber's anteroom is completely empty and in perfect working condition. Nary a broken panel or protruding piece of rebar in sight. Look back. Did you forget something? I suggest you hurry. Examine the sentinel. Place your hand into the sentinel's maw. The sentinel's jaw clamps around your hand, puncturing your skin and sh sinking into your flesh. A few dark drops fall into the servitor's throat, and immediately you're humming as a servo motor start up and the pumps turn into motion. The vid screen of the cogitator flickers. Several long minutes pass. The sentinel's jaws remain closed, and you're beginning to feel sick. Perhaps if you were to lean against the gate, you could catch your breath. Maybe even close your eyes and pretend none of this ever ha- High levels of caustic humors. The subject is in a state of heightened stress. Do you require assistance? Do not understand where the voice is coming from, crackling like static. Is it the sentinel, the cogitator? Is it a figment of your weary mind? Whichever it is, you can clearly hear every word. Yep, I require assistance. Pain shoots through your head and subsides just as quickly. It would seem the entity called in your consciousness does not have the ability to do you any real harm. Request accepted. Initiating defense protocol. <laughs> well, there is still another way. Check the warrant chamber. The enormous gates match the importance of the thing that they protect. The massive doors are made of heavy metal and look impregnable. Yo, oh, look at this thing. Let it be known that by my will and by the true words of this document, I appoint this person to be the bearer of the warrant of trade and bestow upon them then the dynasty, but to the paragon of humanity and broken by adversity to walk bravely first into darkness to unite and reclaim once was lost, to triumph over nightmares untold and hold the boldly reins of fate to walk steadily in the ruined road of thorns through pain to greatness. Dependus. Escort the child of the house to safety. I need a weapon. I'm utterly defenseless. Distance from the current location to the nearest arsenal. Initiating situational calculations. I need to contact someone, preferably Theodora. Voxcast frequencies disrupted. Initiating setup. Establishing connection. Uh, have you? Is this the first time you've played all this? Yes. Yeah, this is, I, I have not done any of this. This is all completely new to me. In the place of the mechanical screech in the service skulls, Volks projects the voice of Theodora Van Valencius. Distorted and ridden with static, it's still recognizable beyond a doubt. Boxmaster, restore communication to the Navigator's Sanctum. I'm trying to contact the bridge. If anyone can hear me in this frequency, regroup all available forces and head to the upper decks at once. I repeat, regroup all available forces and head. Communication protocols breached. Signal latency assessment unavailable. Unable to establish two-way connection. What madness is happening here? Who are you and who addresses me? Temporary obnubilation following acute stress. Mobile unit of the Warren Sentinel standing by. I would like to state for the record that the word of the day is obnubilation. Try to use it in a sentence. Uh, the sacred relic document that affirms the preeminent rights of a rogue trader throughout the galaxy. Are you the Warren Sentinel? Mobile unit of the Warren Sentinel, designed as a personal escort of the child of the house and a means of communicating with the rogue trader's subjects. Mobile unit standing by. Obnubilation is the process or fact of making dimmer, darker, or obscure. Okay. There we go. Now, now you know. Now you know. The icon. Okay. Lead me away from here. Middle and upper decks. Assuming the probability of safe placement in areas of concentration of armed units, calculating. To prevent unauthorized units from breaching the warrant chamber, preemptive sealing must be initiated. The mobile unit will start executing the received order immediately after the safety of the warrant is secured. Cool. 